This video shows more driver CC functions such as constants blocks, temp registers, subroutines, communication blocks, some logic blocks, and compound functions. During this video, I will be using DriveWorks Pro since the application requires a larger amount of connections. If you feel you need DriveWorks Pro after watching this video, there is information on the steps to obtain the Pro license at the end of this video. Jumping into some functions, the constant blocks are exactly as they sound. They output a constant, unchanging value. We used the 100p block on the previous application story to sum with our trim amount using an add block. All these numerical constants, 50p, 10p, etc., will all output percentages equivalent to their label. There's also logical constants. True blocks outputs always remain true and false blocks outputs will remain. You guessed it, false. Temporary registers are used in pairs. A store block will store either a numerical or a logical value. You can recall that stored value anywhere in your program by using the matching recall block. For example, you can store a numerical value with the num write one or w1 file. The w stands for write. You can recall or read this value with the num r1 or read one block. Care should be taken with the order of block usage. If the read is executed before the write, then the value recalled will be from the previous scan of the program. There is another function block group called subroutines. So notice there's nothing here right now because there are no subroutines in this project currently. You can either import a subroutine created in another project by using the import subroutine icon and finding a file with a .ydwzs extension in the folder of some previous project. Or you can create a new subroutine by using the new subroutine button found in the upper right next to the new page button. Let's create a new subroutine as an example. We will call it test. This light blue block is the end or output of your subroutine. So I'm going to add in a few function blocks just to show how it will work. So let's take our temp register read block from our main page. We're going to recall that and let's just run it through an absolute value block to make sure it never goes negative. Make your connections like you normally would. Line everything up. The subroutine will be compiled when the main program is compiled. It is important to remember that any function blocks can be used in a subroutine, but if a block is used that is a once per program block, like the frequency reference block, it can then not be used in the main program. So you could connect this to anything else in your program. The primary benefit of using a subroutine is that subroutine connections are only counted once, no matter how many times you use that subroutine in a given project. There are also blocks for incorporating communication registers available under the Communications tab if you are using DriverXEZ Pro version of the software. The right blocks are the ones with the W on them and will store or write a numerical or logical value to drive registers with specific Modbus addresses. These values can then be accessed over a network communications. CON or CON type blocks are for numerical values while COL or COL types are for logical values. Be aware that when the drive is powered down that the register values are all reset back to zero. Read blocks are designated with the R labeling. These will retrieve either numerical or logical values stored in the drive registers with the specific Modbus addresses. Now we can attempt to use DriverXEZ Pro to solve an application story together. If you attempt to follow along with DriverXEZ standard, you will run out of connections. Here's what the customer is requesting. Refer to your application guide if you would like to read along. Create a new project called Tank Level and include your name and company. Create a project page called VFD Motor. Control the speed of a pump that is filling a large tank using the DriveWorks EZ PI controller block. The tank depth feedback will be an ultrasonic sensor mounted above the tank, sending the drive a 0 to 10 volts DC signal. The depth feedback will be noisy due to waves in the tank, so filtering of the feedback is required. The optimum tank level will be settable via a Q parameter. Minimum motor speed will also be settable via a Q parameter. Include monitors for tank level, PI error, and drive output speed. All right, so let's review the solution together. Up on the top left, we have our level set point, so the user can change parameter Q101, and that will change their set point for the system. 
On the bottom, we have our feedback, which is terminal AI1. That is going to run through a filter, which is going to be a delay filter to clean up the noisy signal due to waves in the tank. If you want to adjust the filter time, you can just look over here on the properties, and you can change your delay filter time. The greater the filter time, the greater the filtering, but the less responsive the feedback signal becomes. The feedback will be subtracted from the set point, and that's going to be the input to our PI block. See these two PI block digital inputs right here, input 1 and input 2? The false block connected here is to a PI disable input. The bottom input right here is an integral reset that might be useful if the drive is not running. Let's add a limit block on the output of the PI block. The limit block on the output of that PI block is going to provide our minimum pump speed. So you will need to set your upper and lower limit right here in the properties window since both limits default to 0%. So we're going to adjust Q407 to change the lower limit. And finally, the output of that limiter goes to our frequency command and also a monitor, U802, which was requested. So let's demonstrate this program working. I've already cleared the drive with the Erase Drive program tool. I've also downloaded the project to the drive and DriveWorks EZ10 was put into monitoring mode. We can use the DriveWorks EZ10 interface itself to adjust some of the values since we are online with the drive. Q101 is my set point, so let's just set that to 40% here in the properties window. Notice that AI1 defaults to 0 to 10 volts input. We need to double check what the limiter block is set for. Highlight the LIM block and check the properties window, which will show Q406 and Q407 as the upper and lower limits respectively. So I'm going to change Q406 to 100% to give me my full range. Q407 defaults to zero, so we're not going to have a minimum pump speed at this point. Now that I'm in monitor mode, I can see a 40% set point and a 50% feedback. Once I give this a run command in my virtual I.O., you will notice that there will be no frequency output. On the output of the LIM1, there is a 0% until my feedback A2 drops below my set point. So if I put the analog feedback at 30% to simulate a low level in the tank, I will then see the drive speed begin to increase. Now the one issue with this is if we do reach our set point. So let's just say our feedback goes up to 42%. It will be right above our set point, so we should see our speed slow down, which you can see now, and it will eventually go all the way to 0%, so that would just totally stop the pump. However, this customer did require a lower limit on his pump speed. So once that's all the way at zero, I'm going to stop the drive by opening S1. We will stay online with the drive, but make sure that the LIM1 block is highlighted. Now in the properties window, I can adjust the lower limit and write it to the drive immediately. Let's put this at 50%, so that will limit the pump to 50% speed on the low end. Let's give this a new run command. You can see the output is 50%. When my feedback is higher than my set point, it will run at a minimum of 50%. So this will be great for pumps that do not move water at less than 50% speed. Let's fast forward into the future for part two of this application story. Customer was extremely satisfied with our DriveWorks EZ skills. They would like us to modify the tank level program we made to include functionality to pull in a line started lag motor. Let's reference back to the application guide to see what they need. On the existing project called tank level, create a new project page called line started motor. There will be a digital output that starts the across-the-line motor. Start conditions include when the VFD is at max frequency and the liquid level is below a settable parameter for a settable amount of time. The stop condition will be that the drive is not running or the liquid level is above the settable parameter for a settable amount of time. Note that you may need to make some changes to the original tank level project page. All right. So let's review the solution for this one and demonstrate how it works. So this is our main project page that we created with the previous part one of this application story. The only modification that was necessary was to take the filtered feedback and store it into a temporary register. So we created a new page called line started motor and you can see that we recall that value in a couple of places here. These top rungs here is what's going to pull in our line started motor and the bottom portion here is what's going to drop out our line started motor. So if our frequency output is equal to 100%, and I also put a bandwidth here of about 3%, so if the frequency output is bouncing a hertz or two up and down, it will still stay true. 
and our filtered feedback is less than or equal to our on level, then this AND gate will go true. We'll have true here, true here, and so AND will output a true. This is an on delay timer, a time delay that can be adjusted, and that goes into the set of our flip-flop. This bottom portion here will turn off our line started motor. So if the drive is not running or the filtered feedback is greater than or equal to the off level that passes through this off delay, and that would go true and open the contact for the motor. So let's just turn this on. So I'm already in the monitoring mode, so I'm going to close S1. Now currently you can see that my feedback is 60%. My set point is 50%, so this is just going to run at the minimum speed, which is a limit of 50%. So if I go to my second page, you will see that D01, which is the MAMC output, is off. So what's going to turn this on is if my feedback dropped below my on level, Q102, which is currently set at 40%. So if I drop my feedback down to, say, 35%, then this goes true here, and my drive is going to speed up. As my frequency output increases, and it will eventually equal 100% if the feedback stays low, then this equal then block goes true and the and block goes true. That goes through my on delay and my motor contractor is now on, so MAMC is lit up. Just to show that it will also drop out that contactor, let me scroll down here. Now for this to work, the motor must be stopped, so I could open up S1. Once the motor ramps all the way to zero, we can see this run block go false, and that will be the first input of this OR gate. So when that OR went true, the motor contactor dropped out. Let's just start the drive up again to show the other condition on the OR gate which will stop the line started motor, and that is when our feedback is greater than or equal to the off level. So I have the off level set at 60%. Once the tank fills past 60%, our feedback rises. Let's just say 61%. The greater than equal block goes true, and that goes through our off delay. This goes true, and the contactor is dropped out. Should you have any questions about this application story or DriveWorks EZ Pro, please inform the instructor. I would like to thank you for watching this video training series for Yaskawa's DriveWorks EZ 10 software. As previously mentioned, if you would like to receive your own pro-level license, the first step is to complete and pass the multiple choice certification test found in this self-guided lesson. Once you have successfully passed the certification test, Get approval from your Yaskawa sales rep and distributor and fill out the application form for Driver XCZ Pro training. Once we get that form submitted to us, we can get you access to the online Driver XCZ Pro demo unit if you don't already have it, so that you can complete the two pro test projects that are covered in the pro application guide and in the chapter eight video.